First, let's go over a few definitions about SOFR futures contracts so that you guys understand conceptually what they are. And then once we've got the basics down, we're going to hop into Excel to show how we can calculate the interest rates and settlement prices of both three-month futures contracts on SOFR and also one-month futures contracts. So let's dive right into it. SOFR stands for the Secured Overnight Financing Rate. It serves as a pivotal benchmark rate to seeding LIBOR in this role. So it's going to be a benchmark rate for a lot of derivatives and futures contracts and fixed income contracts. So how SOFR is calculated is they actually look at transactions in the treasury's markets and try to determine what would be the interest rate to just borrow overnight, so one single day, for a very large financial institution that has practically no risk of defaulting on that loan. And so it succeeded LIBOR because, I don't know if you guys remember, but back in 2012, all the big banks that were determining what LIBOR would be were basically manipulating LIBOR and then using it to profit off of their manipulations. And so now the whole financial institution is moving to SOFR. And so there's all sorts of volume in these SOFR futures contracts. So let, let's go over what a futures contract is real quick. So a futures contract is an agreement between two parties to buy or sell an asset at a certain time in the future for a certain price. And I'll show you what I mean on this timeline below. Let's say that today is February, and I know that in June, I'm going to need to borrow money for three months. And I don't want to risk that interest rates are going to change in the period of time leading up to June, right? So between June and February, we have four months of time where the interest rates that are expected in this three month period right here could change. So what I could do today in February is lock into a three month SOFR futures contract that says I'm going to borrow at this expected three month SOFR futures rate in this period right here. And so if that amount changes over time, as we get closer to this period, I won't have to worry about those interest rates changing. So SOFR futures can be good for people looking to hedge away interest rate risk or people who want to profit by speculating on changes of future interest rates. So um, the way that three month futures are calculated can be a little bit convoluted. And so we're gonna dive into Excel right now to go through an example calculation of how to determine one, the settlement price of a three month SOFR futures contract and also uh, what the expected interest rate would be for that contract. And then after that, we'll do one month, which is different than three months. So if the SOFR rate is just a overnight rate, so one day, how do we end up with a three month SOFR rate? Well, I'm gonna show you conceptually really quick. So if this is our three month period that we're interested in right here, well, we can basically just say, hey, what if we like invested a dollar at the start of this and we just kept it in and we let the interest compound? Well, we'd have one SOFR rate for one day, then the next day we'd have another SOFR rate, and then the next day we'd have another, and the next day we'd have another. Eventually there'd be like 90 of these, and our interest would just compound for 90 days straight, and we'd be earning interest on our interest, and then what would the dollar end up? at the end maybe it's like one dollar and five cents or something like that so that's really how it's going to be calculated for this three month um this three month sofer futures contract so let's dive into an excel how we actually calculate that so here we have all the transaction days from june of 2017 all the way through september of 2017. Uh, one thing i want to point out is that these uh, sofer futures contracts they always trade on the third wednesday of the month at least for the three months one so this is going to be the third wednesday of 2017 for june and then down at the bottom, this is going to be the third Wednesday of September for 2017. And then we have the SOFR rate for every single day in that whole period. And then this column here is the day count. So most days are just uh, one or most periods or rows are for one day of interest. But then you'll see here it's for three days because um, the 24th and the 25th were, for, were uh, weekends. So this rate will actually apply for three straight days. 
uh, because these don't trade on the weekends. So one thing we need to do is come up with a daily interest amount factor. And I have the formula right up here showing how we can calculate that. It's going to be equal to one plus the SOFR as a decimal, which is just this value right here, times the day count, which is just going to be this value in this column, divided by 360. So also these SOFR futures contracts, they assume a convention of 360 days in a year. Let's hit enter. I'll take that, control C. Uh, control down arrow, and then I'll do control shift up arrow, and then I'll just right click to paste formulas. So now we have our daily interest amount factor for every single uh, period in this whole uh, three months SOFR contract. And now we can go calculate what's the annualized SOFR rate for this period and the actual contract settlement price for this uh, three month SOFRs contract. So we're gonna need to take the product of all these daily interest amount factors. And that's really easy. We just do equal to product, and then we'll click there, control shift down arrow, and then hit enter. So basically what this is doing is it's just summing all the values in this range. So it's like this, multi sorry, it's multiplying all the values in this range. So it's this multiplied by this, multiplied by this, multiplied by this, and just all the way down. And this basically gives us our interest rate for this specific period of time. And what we need to do now is take off this part after the decimal and then annualize it. So we're gonna do equal to I6 minus one. So we've now got just this uh, decimal component here and we're gonna multiply it by 360 divided by the sum of the day count. So this is how we're annualizing it. So we're going to just grab all of the values in this day column and then hit enter and we find out our annualized rate is 1.0504%. However, the CME group specifies that the futures contracts uh, annualized interest rates are gonna be rounded to the nearest 1 100th of a basis point. So we can do that by just taking the round formula in Excel and we're gonna grab that value in I7 and we're gonna take it to the sixth decimal place and hit enter. So this is really the interest rate that the CME group would use to value this futures contract for this period of time. And now we can easily come up with the contract settlement price, which is just going to be equal to one minus this value here, that annualized and rounded rate times 100. And so our contract settlement price is actually $98 and uh, basically 95 cents. And now who would have won this contract who would come out ahead in value? It would depend on what would have been the price of the contract when we entered into it back in February. And so how they would have determined the price back in February before we had all this data is it would have been based on expected interest rates in the future. So how it was priced in, what the expectations were, and then who comes up in value or who loses in value is based on how the actual values come in as compared to what would have been expected in the first place. Now let's jump into how do we value a one month uh, futures contract, which is a lot easier than this. Calculating the price of a one month SOFR futures contract is a piece of cake. Now let's assume that we had entered into a one month SOFR futures contract for the month of July in 2017, and then after that period of time ends, now we're trying to determine the contract settlement price. And we've got this data here. So we've got a SOFR rate for every single day of that month. You'll notice that on like a weekend, so here would be Friday going in from into Saturday and Sunday, you'll see that the price from Friday just remains or the rate from Friday remains for the weekend. So we've got all of our data. The one month is so easy. It's just an arithmetic average. So we're just going to to find out our average daily rate. We just do equals average. We grab all the SOFR rates in that range with control shift down, hit enter. Now we need to round this one to the nearest one tenth of a basis point. So be careful. The three month was one hundredth of a basis point. For some reason for this one, they only do one tenth of a basis point, which is going to be equal to round. Now we'll grab that average daily rate and we'll round it to the fifth decimal. There we go. And now our contract settlement price is just going to be equal to one minus that rounded rate times 100. And the value is going to settle at $98 and basically 96 cents. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. 
You can download the file that I created in this video for free with the link in the description or the pinned comment. Please subscribe for more content just like it. Thank you.